with Cruising Yachts here in Marina del Rey and I'd like to uh, invite you to have a look through this beautiful uh, Hunter 46. It's an O2 model in absolutely immaculate condition and uh, we'd love for you to come down and have a look for yourself. I'd like to go through the boat a bit and also talk a little bit about purchasing um, brokerage or used boats uh, in general. Some of the things we look for, uh, some of the ways uh, things are, are priced and, um, and how to approach that when you're uh, new or newer to that, uh, that, that purchase process. The name of the boat is Vendaloo. Uh, it's been lovingly cared for. It's a great value and uh, so come aboard and we'll have a look around. Hi, welcome to the cockpit of Vendaloo. Um, as you can see, the instruments are all state-of-the-art, late model instruments. Uh, Ray Marine, which is top of the line in terms of quality. Uh, we have the RL70, uh, which is uh, uh, both a, a plotter and a radar. Um, we have the, um, this is I believe the 7001 autopilot, and then our wind speed and direction. Everything is integrated, integrated on a SeaTalk system. And I'm familiar with this gear. It was the exact same gear that I had on a, a boat I sailed from here to Tahiti. It was flawless through the entire trip, so I highly recommend it. The VHF is mounted here as an additional one. Hunter had a habit of installing standard VHFs in the companion way in the hopes that both it would be convenient for both people in the cockpit and down below. Um, a lot of people found that it was convenient for neither, so uh, in this case they added another VHF up here. You've got repeaters up forward for your crew. Uh, it'll show wind, depth, um, speed, and really whatever you not want. Those um, uh, instruments are uh, amazing in what they'll do. But everything is also read out on your display, so you have it there. Down here you have your JVC stereo control. Uh, they use the folding wheels when at anchor. Um, it's convenient to fold them out of the way. And um, we have cockpit cushions. We've got four cabin top winches. And uh, so it's easy to sail the boat with a limited crew and comfortable with the uh, canvas work that they have here. We have the Dodger. We have the Dodger forward, the Bimini here, and the cockpit extension. So for either rain or sun protection, uh, those are major factors. We have our stereo here, speakers, and of course the stainless steel arches. And um, uh, we'll dis discuss the rig a bit, but it's important. Also we have the weather cloths, um, which are um, unusual. You can see the stern rail seats, uh, the, the teak's been uh, perfectly varnished. Uh, you've got a, uh, a nice um, barbecue there. But those weather cloths really make it comfortable uh, in, a, in the morning and in the evening it gets cool on the water and uh, the breeze goes through. It's really quite nice to have. We can look aft here also at the, um, the davits. I don't think the dinghy is officially goes with it, but it's a really cool uh, rigid bottom with a 10 horse Yamaha. It's a perfect rig. So, um, so if it were me, I'd try to negotiate that one in the deal. Um, we've got a, uh, a, a helm seat here that flips down and forms a step to the um, swim platform for easy access. And, um, and that's pretty much got our cockpit here, I think. It's a wonderful, comfortable cockpit. You've got a little uh, ice chest here right in the middle of it. You've got the tables that fold out for uh, dining on deck, and um, uh, it's just uh, a wonderful place to spend a lot of time and enjoy the company of your friends and family. I'd like to talk a little bit about the rig on the Hunters. We are the Hunter dealers, and so we're fortunate in that we have lots of nice uh, quality late model uh, uh, brokerage hunters on the market, as well as being able to, uh, to provide you with new ones. Um, the rigs are unique. A lot of people uh, don't have familiarity with the uh, design concept, but it's worth uh, it's worth noting. Um, it's called a BNR rig. Uh, the initials BNR are for Bergstrom and uh, Rudder, uh, two uh, Swedish naval architects who set out to design a rig for the around-alone open 
uh, 60 racers. And what they needed to do, remember, if you're sailing offshore, 90% of the sailing is some form of a reach. You're rarely going directly upwind and you're rarely going dead downwind. So um, the, the reaching sail is the main. That's more efficient um, than a jib in reaching situations. As you know, when you're sailing with a main and jib, you fall off the wind, the jib becomes less and less effective and dead downwind, it's, it's hardly doing much at all. You have to go to lightweight spinnakers and things like that. So what they did, um, because these are single-handed racers and they're open 60s, so tremendous loads, um, they moved the mast forward, making a smaller four triangle and a smaller jib, which um, is easier for one person to handle but also being smaller it allows them to lead it closer inboard so rather than having the jib track down on the deck with a wider sheeting angle they put it up on the cabin top for a closer sheeting angle so in reality these boats point very close to the wind and um, are actually uh, known for, for that characteristic so now we have the mast forward so we can get an enormous main up here um, and that's where we want the power in the sail area. So the problem with doing that, when you have such a large main, um, is that the loads are so great, you could no longer use a mid-boom traveler. Now, typically, uh, boat manufacturers like the mid-boom traveler because it gets the traveler out of the cockpit. If you have a traveler with a big main banging across the, uh, the, the, the cockpit, with your kids and friends in there, um, it's really not very safe. Um, but you need, on a sail this big, to have the purchase on the end of the boom. It gives you more power and um, uh, to control the larger sail. So they needed to have an in-boom traveler, but they didn't want it in the cockpit. So they did the very expensive um, uh, fix for that, which is the stainless steel arch. And um, it's very nice. The arch is great. You can attach canvas to it. Um, it keeps the, the traveler out of the way and um, it makes it very easy to control the main because you have uh, so much more leverage uh, using the end of the boom. So then what they did, they said, well, it's got to be the strongest rig that uh, you can make. The BNR rigs are actually probably the most expensive rigs on production boats that you can get. Um, and what they do, it's a redundant discontinuous rig. If you've seen other of my Hunter videos, you've heard that. But if you'll notice, you've got diagonals here. And you've got a, a, a shroud here, the upper, and then the, the lower diagonals. So that if one shroud broke, you could replace it and not lose the mast. It's also discontinuous. So the shrouds are fastened at the end of the um, spreaders. It's, it's less expensive to run one shroud the whole length, but this way if you lose one part of it um, you can replace it and the rig is just generally stronger. It's also stronger because of the 30 degree swept back spreaders. Um, I call it the Eiffel Tower rig. It's, it's the strongest rig money could buy and um, they've just never had problems with them. They also use a Selden mast. Seldens are a little more expensive. They have a very good reputation. And um, one of the reasons is most manufacturers have an assembly line where they lay out the extrusions and you know somebody welds on the, the cranes and, and brackets for the spreaders and it goes on down the assembly line. At Selden they have one rigger um, who's fully qualified who builds the entire mast and there's a uh, serial number on it that goes right back to that guy. If there's a problem, they go, hey Joe, what did you do to that uh, to that mass? So um, they have a lot of pride in their work and we have a lot of pride in, in uh, uh, having these uh, these rigs. The furling system is also a little more advanced and um, you can use a uh, winch handle if needed. If your furling line broke as an example, um, you, you could furl that up and it's a very reliable system that they've had good luck with. This boat also has a uh, spinnaker halyard, and um, so it's a great rig. Uh, we're, we're proud to, uh, to uh, represent these, 
and I think that you would enjoy having one uh, quite a lot if you uh, sail with these. The people who sail them uh, really uh, love them and uh, tend to keep them. Hunter uh, uses these um, doors rather than boards, which is so much more convenient for getting in and out. And they have uh, companionway steps that are easy to, um, to access as well. So it's just a nice little touch that, that we like with, uh, with the Hunters. Welcome to the main salon of Vendaloo, uh, the beautiful uh, Hunter 46. We'll go through some of this in detail, but I wanted to remark a little bit about the uh, purchasing prospect process for, uh, for brokerage boats in general. Um, I had some people in looking at a boat, and they were new to boating and new to the process, and they said, well, we've been told that, you know, uh, everybody offers 10% uh, less than the asking price and, and uh, boats generally go for uh, something like that. Um, it was interesting because I've, I've heard that from time to time, but as uh, brokers we have access to the sold boat websites where we actually see the listed price, the selling price, and the date listed, the date sold, so we have time on market of um, all the various boats in different categories. Um, and that information just does not match, I think, the, the generally held concepts about it. What we often see is that there are a few boats in very nice condition. Um, I happen to think this boat falls into that category. But in general, that sell at or very close to their asking price. And we've had a number of boats selling at or very close to asking price uh, uh, in the past year or so. These are nice boats that are nicely equipped, that haven't been bastardized. Some people come in and start cutting away at cabinetry and things like that that can you know, um, hurt the values. And um, people buy them. Um, I had one like that where the buyer came in and, and offered the asking price because he had found another boat that was absolutely beautiful and he'd made his 10% below asking price and didn't get the boat and the boat went away. Uh, in that case, another nice boat, and he said, I, I just don't want to lose it and have to pay more money for a, for a lesser boat or even less money, but not for the boat I want. So you also find boats that aren't in very good condition and don't have very good equipment and, um, and that sort of a thing, and those boats will go for some, uh, uh, some discounts. So you have to decide your priorities and um, find a broker that's going to find boats that, that match that priority and um, whether it's a fancy boat um, in beautiful condition or a fixer-upper, um, a project boat, as we say, for a, for a very discounted price, um, find out what your cup of tea is and, and, again, find a broker who's going to find that cup of tea for you and get you the best deal out there. I like to say uh, it's our job to find you the best deal possible, and it's your job to know a good deal when you see one. And that takes some work. I always say... It's more work buying a boat than it is selling them. So we'll work with you and um, find the, the product you're looking for. Um, again, this is a good example of a boat where I think you'll appreciate uh, the upgraded equipment and the condition of the boat as we go through it. The main salon on Vendaloo is very spacious and bright and open. We actually have covers on the skylights here and an overcast day. Um, it's always bright in here. Uh, Hunter uses a uh, lovely um, uh, soft Italian leather, um, calfskin leather, uh, on the upholstery, which is beautiful. You have the, uh, the club chairs over here, uh, which are very popular. They actually have fashioned um, an extension where they can remove that center arm storage space and um, uh, so they can sit along there. Well, right now we have... Um, just a nice storage space for condiments or what have you. The table can go down so you can sleep even more people. Um, and the quality of the woodwork is outstanding. Um, I think you can see over here the thermostat. You have forced air heating and air conditioning uh, that you can easily control from there, thermostatically controlled. It's really nice. Um, that requires a uh, a generator to use underway can operate on shore power here, but when you're cruising, and this boat is set up for uh, pretty close to world cruising, there's a, a 
a few things of safety and communication here to add, but otherwise uh, the electronics and the engine and generator are, are good to go anywhere in the world. It's a Class A rated offshore boat. Um, under here, you see the control for the water maker. Now that's a Spectra. It's the top of the line. It's a $20,000 water maker. It's $20,000 in air conditioning and heating and $20,000 for the generator. So this boat is priced with other boats that don't have any of those items. So you've got $60,000 more in equipment and if you're going to cruise another comparable boat you'd need to add that. Um, and yet the price is comparable to other boats. Much lower engine hours, very low generator hours, and um, again, you can see the finish, um, it's, uh, it's immaculate and ready to move right in and, and get underway. Welcome to the owner's stateroom forward on the Hunter 46. The double door entries are really nice for letting light in and um, it's nice to be able to keep, keep them open. The uh, cabin features a pedestal bed which is something everybody really likes rather than V-berth because you can get up around it to get on and off and to make the bed it's very convenient beautiful bookcase up forward with the reading lights and it's really nice they move that that bulkhead a little bit back so that it's it's wider and you can have um, the the top of the uh, the berth going forward which people seem to prefer now you have tons of, of storage space hanging lockers lockers all over shelving up by the berth and you have the shower on one side and the enclosed head on the other side so you have a lot of room and I'll let you open that up and take a peek. Separate stall shower, enclosed head, now those are vacuum flush, fresh water um, heads uh, operated with the pedal so there's no odor in the boat and that's that's important. You can't see that in the video but but there is no odor on this boat. It's very clean. The uh, nav station is a sailor's favorite here on the um, Hunter 46. First of all, it's facing forward, um, which we like. And uh, second of all, it's got a repeater uh, display, navigational display. Very convenient. And you can tie your onboard laptop or iPad or whatever into the onboard system if you want. Um, and then we have our AC and DC electrical panels. Um, we've got our uh, gauges, uh, fuel levels, and also the, uh, uh, the batteries. Uh, there's a, a house bank of, I think, four batteries and then a separate engine start battery. Um, the battery uh, barrel switches are down here. There's also a circuit breaker for the windlass up forward. And over here we have our um, inverter. Um, panel and control so if we're sailing and we want music and a, and a coffee maker and so forth we don't have to turn on the generator we can use the inverter so it's um, it's very convenient great nav station hunters are known for their galleys first of all the Corian counters are wonderful Corian is like the perfect marine material it can be repaired um, it's not terribly heavy uh, it's uh, immune to the marine environment um, it's just ideal double stainless sink nice faucets a three burner stove with an oven and um, built-in microwave the reefer is enormous and is front loading as well as top loading so you can access the bottom without emptying the whole thing out next to it we have a deep freeze which is huge it goes way down there but that's for your real frozen things and of course the microwave to defrost them. Nice panel of drawers, missing in a lot of boats these days, and um, uh, pans, good storage for everything, trash is conveniently stowed away. Um, you have under the stairs here, people, there's a pan there which is actually can be used uh, as a wet locker. You can throw things there in and out. Um, and uh, it's very convenient. So it's a wonderful galley. You uh, have this uh, divider here for additional storage of uh, various wear. And you've got some of these um, original um, Hunter um, 
plates and so forth, which is kind of fun that they've kept those. The 146 was offered in several layouts, but the office version, which we have here, was by far the most popular because the third cabin um, was set up as an office. You could have gotten it as a shop, but most people like the office. Here it's been kind of used uh, a bit as a pantry and storage, but um, you can make a very nice workspace out of it. There's a lot of storage in there, and um, it's just a good all-around space for um, what, however you'd like to use it. The aft cabin, or guest cabin, um, is very nice. There's plenty of standing headroom in it, and um, a large size berth, um, and plenty of storage. It's a very, very comfortable, full size, pretty much queen size berth. Um, the, the boat manufacturers tend to use queen size dimensions, uh, even though they're beveled here and there to accommodate the shape of the hull. It also has private access into the aft head, and that's a really nice feature. You have a separate stall shower and a private head for the aft cabin. Um, you know the old saying, two heads are better than one. Well, in the case where you've got company on board and they're uh, back at the back of the boat, they have their own head, private access, you're up forward, you have your own facilities, and um, everybody is at their own end of the boat, and it makes for keeping good friends. It's a, um, it's a nice layout indeed. And uh, for this boat, it, it, it's been a popular feature. The engine is very clean. It's been well maintained. And um, I think the boat is in a good position for to be surveyed. The generator is, is aft, and there's, uh, I think, two, maybe three air conditioning systems um, on board as well in different locations. Here's your engine start battery. Um, you can see very clean, dry bilge. Uh, this is a boat we would expect to survey out well. Some of the other things we look for during the boat purchasing process, um, we all understand that uh, the boat purchase is subject to sea trial and survey, and the surveyors do a professional job of, of checking the boats out. But there's a lot you can do yourself or with your, your broker. Um, for instance, we go through and we look for evidence of um, uh, of damage, collision, uh, repairs, um, partial submergence, water stains down below or up above, uh, water in the bilge, fresh or salt water, corrosion on the engine, the battery terminals, and the uh, stainless steel work. I like to look around and I see a set of lifelines and um, turnbuckles like this. I see no corrosion and it looks well cared for, so that's a good start. I'll feel the hull and if it's chalky uh, and the boat uh, hasn't been polished, uh, you'll, you'll notice that. It's been oxidized. Other boats where it feels silky and smooth, it's being well maintained. Uh, so we pull up cushions. We look to see if there's any damage or water stains uh, that uh, aren't out in the open and um, leaks from the engine, all that kind of stuff. So you can have a good look at a boat and save yourself some trouble again. Um, any of those issues uh, don't necessarily mean it's not the boat that, that you'd like to have. You just need to be aware of, of what you're getting and what needs to be done. When you get to the survey process, here we typically use the boat yard or windward yacht center. And uh, Victor at the boat yard um, or Simon at, at windward are extremely knowledgeable. So when a surveyor says it looks like there's a problem with the rudder, we go to the yard and we get the people who do that work explain how it will be repaired and what it will cost so that you'll know what, you're, uh, what you have to deal with there and um, as you go um, and um, you'll be able to make a more informed decision. So hopefully you'll have a broker that helps you walk through that so you come away fully informed and you can make uh, uh, the right decision for you uh, in finding the right boat. Thanks for visiting us here on Vendaloo. I hope you come down and have a look. You won't be disappointed. It's absolutely beautiful. It's immaculate. And we're getting that feedback from the uh, brokers and the uh, uh, prospects who are having a look at it. So give us a call. Uh, my cell phone, 818-404-4479. It's Buzz Stoddard. 
and we'll uh, hopefully speak with you soon. Thanks. Thanks for visiting the Vindaloo. I hope you enjoyed the video. Um, that's it. <laughs>